My granny always insisted I eat my carrots. You don't see a rabbit wearing glasses, she said. Well, maybe I should have listened, I don't know. But I tell you what, carrots are now a firm favourite in my family. Mm. Everyone loves a crunchy carrot, right? But many people are put off growing them by their reputation as being a little bit tricky. But they're not, if you know how. Come on, let's grab our seeds and get started. Now, ideally, you want your soil to have warmed up a bit and dried out a bit after the long, wet winter. I've helped mine along by erecting this temporary cover. It's like a miniature greenhouse, and therefore all the solar radiation in there has helped it dry out much quicker. I'm going to dismantle it now, and then we can start sowing. It's best to sow your carrots directly where they're going to grow. It's easier that way, and it avoids any issues with bent or forked roots, which you may get if you transplant seedlings from elsewhere. The soil itself should be free draining. In fact, this is one of the few crops that actively benefits from sandier soils. You don't want your soil to be too rich either, which can encourage forked roots, though honestly, I don't think it's that big a deal to have forked roots. It just gives them a bit more character, in my opinion, and where else would you get all those comedy-shaped veggies from? <laughs> Carrots grow best in full sunshine, but you can get away with dappled shade, especially if you're in a hotter climate. I'm making the rows that I'm going to sow into about, what, a centimetre or half an inch deep, and I'm going to space them roughly 10 inches, that's 25 centimetres apart, that's the next row. Now, because this topping here for this bed is actually uh, mushroom compost, it's a little bit coarse for the carrot seeds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the, the drill here that I'm making slightly wider and slightly deeper, and then fill it with some nice crumbly potting mix that the seeds will more easily be able to germinate into. And then once they're away, they'll be fine in this growing medium. Carrot seeds are really quite tiny. So if you haven't got the steadiest hand, one way to space the seeds out a bit more evenly is to mix a pinch of your seeds with some sand and give it a good mix and then sow pinches of your seed sand mix. That way the seeds will be more evenly spaced. I'm gonna try my luck and just sow them as they are. What I'm sowing here is an early variety. That's a variety that can cope with these slightly cooler conditions at this time of year. It should give a crop within about well, two months, hopefully. It's always tempting to just sow the last few seeds in your hand, but really it's best just to pop them back in the packet and save those for later, because you'll only have to thin out the seedlings once they've germinated. Now then, let's get these covered over. I'm gonna cover them over with a bit more of our potting mix here, and then give them a water to get them started. I've only sown two rows of carrots today, and that's because I'll make another sowing in about three to four weeks' time, and then on like that, so I get a nice succession of roots, and they don't all come at once. The last sowing I will make will be in early to mid-summer, and that will be of a main crop variety to give big, fat, chunky roots that will store well over the winter months. Now, if it's hot and dry when you sow, one option is to mark out your drill, and then water along it, let it drain through, and then repeat then make your sowings and cover over with the dry soil. What that does is it gives the lovely moist conditions around the seeds that they need to germinate, but the surface remains dry, which makes it less attractive to slugs. More on that later on. Interestingly, holding back with the watering can can actually pay dividends when it comes to flavour. It's a case of treating them a bit mean to keep them keen. So, in most climates, where there's a reasonable amount of rain, you may not have to water your carrots at all. That said, if it is quite dry, and especially if it's hot where you are, do keep your carrots watered, because if carrots struggle, then they will be more inclined to bolt when they flower prematurely, and that makes the roots taste inedible and really tough and leathery. Once the seedlings have germinated, you'll probably need to thin them. The first tender young roots that you pull out as thinnings are great eaten whole in salads or lightly steamed as a rather chefy addition to the dinner table. Then continue thinning in stages till the plants are about half an inch or just over a centimetre apart. The roots should then push themselves away from each other as they grow, giving good sized roots to harvest later on. 
It's very important to keep your carrots weed free, so do meticulously weed between your rows of carrots. They may not care particularly about the quality and nutritional content of the soil, and they might not need much water, but one thing they do care about is having lots of weeds crowding them out, so keep on top of those weeds. Predictably, one of the first pests to watch out for is, of course, slugs. They can mow down a row of freshly germinated seedlings with ruthless efficiency, seemingly overnight. Now, you can set little ramekins filled with beer at ground level. and Those are very effective natural slug traps. Just empty those out quite often. It's the early seedlings that tend to get the most attention. So, sowing a little bit later on tends to avoid the problem of slugs when there's more to eat around anyway. Do make sure you keep the area clear of weeds though, because if there are less places for slugs to hide, well, guess what? You'll have fewer slugs. And unless it is really very dry, there's no need to water. If it's not wet on the surface, they'll be less inclined to come out and nibble at the young tender leaves. But the most notorious challenge when growing carrots is the carrot rust fly or carrot root fly. The females lay their eggs right at the neck of the carrot at the top, and the larvae that then hatch burrow into the carrot as they feed, leaving really mucky tunnels that render the root simply inedible. That's the bad news. The good news is these flies aren't the sharpest tools in the box, and we can use this to our advantage. Let me explain. You see, the females that lay the eggs fly at not much higher than about a foot or 30 centimetres above ground. These raised beds will actually give these carrots a bit of a, a head start on that. But to make double sure, you can just erect a barrier around your carrots that's at least 60 centimetres or two feet tall. That way, they won't get over the top of them. Nevertheless, because the wind can sometimes blow them in, it's best just to cover the whole bed with some sort of row cover. I'm going to use horticultural fleece because it'll add a little bit of warmth this early in the season, but you could use an insect mesh as well for this. I'm lucky, I've escaped problems so far, and I think part of the reason for that is I'm very careful when I thin my carrots. I thin them on a still day when the wind won't carry the smell of carrots on the air to attract the flies, and I also thin in the evening when the flies are less active anyhow. I then give the thinned rows a bit of a water to knock back the smell and settle the disturbed soil. Even better, if you don't mind getting a bit wet, thin them when it's raining, as the flies definitely won't be flying then. A surefire way of sidestepping carrot flies is just to grow your carrots in a container, and the taller the better, because it'll raise your crop out of the danger zone of these low-flying insects. Carrots like a fairly free draining and also quite a poor soil, and that improves the flavour. So growing in containers is a great way to tailor make the potting mix for those carrots, especially if your soil outside is a bit heavy. Now, you can use anything that gives that free draining um, texture that the carrots love. Sand mixed with potting mix, for example, 50-50. I'm using some garden soil that's been sieved or screened together with some old potting mix to uh, fill up my containers. That way, uh, getting the most out of the potting mix from last season and it'll give an ideal environment for my carrots. Then to get them going, all I'm doing is sowing the seeds very thinly over the top of a filled pot and then covering them over with just a touch more of the mix. Water well, label and set into a sunny position. In the greenhouse here, we'll give them a bit of a head start this early in spring. Oh, and if you can raise the pot above the ground, on a bench or window ledge for example, all the better. No flies will manage that. How do you know when your carrots are ready to harvest? Well, have a little bit of a root around. Scrape down the soil and check the neck of the root to get an idea of its size. Carrots should be ready to harvest from about two months after sowing. Younger and shallower roots should come away easily enough, simply by gripping them firmly at the base of the foliage. It often helps to push down on the root first and then give it a twist as you gently pull upwards. Larger, longer roots, especially those of main crop carrots that are sown for winter eating, may need to be eased up with the help of a fork. Remember, harvest in stages or as roots reach full size. In this way, you'll stagger your harvest over many weeks. Like many roots, the first frosts of winter actually make the roots slightly sweeter to taste. 
if winters aren't especially harsh in your area, you can just leave the carrots where they are, though do watch out for slugs which might nibble at them. If winters are harsh, then just lift them all up, twist off the tops of foliage and pack them into breathable boxes of damp sand to store in a cool but frost-free place to use as and when they're needed. Don't forget that carrots come in a range of colours. You've got yellows, reds, purples, whites, as well as, of course, oranges. Try several varieties and brighten your world. I love carrots grated and raw and sweet in salads, roasted, of course, and whizzed up into a beautiful carrot and herb soup. What's your preferred way of serving up these rousing roots? Let me know in the comments below. Now, is anyone else a bit worried about inflation? We've got rising energy costs, food bills, everything across the board seems to be going up right now, and it's quite scary stuff. At least growing your own food is one way you can save a few pennies. And another way you can get more bang for your buck is to split up nursery-grown seedlings and, of course, garden plants, and that's something we'll be looking at next week. Don't miss it. Subscribe, ding the notification bell, and I will catch you next time.